Hi guys, PJ here. Today, working on a 2018 Jaguar F-Pace. We'll be installing the Garmin dash cam into it, and we also have a parking mode power cable here. So this one requires a switch live and a constant live to the fuse box. Nice and simple to do on the Jaguar. Fuse box is in a really sensible place. It is right there in the kick well. So you pull the little panel off, and you've even got a fuse list on the back of it. Nice and handy. First things first, we're going to prepare the power cable, so we're going to unpack this and make it ready to go above the headlining of the vehicle. Ideal tools to do the job, in my opinion, would be a pair of snips, a couple of cable ties, electrical tape, plastic leverage tool. Now, this is probably the most important thing in this entire kit. It's so you can lever plastic things off, such as your fuse box lid or the side of the dashboard, without doing any damage. So if you use a screwdriver, it's gonna put dints in it, and it's gonna look a mess. Plastic leverage tools are about a pound from eBay, Amazon, most local car shops. Well worth the, the trouble of going and getting one. A pair of long nose pliers. I simply use those to pull the fuses out the fuse box because they're quite recessed and the little plastic tool that the car comes with is pretty useless. Not necessary but makes life easier if you're doing a lot of them like I am. A multimeter or if not a test probe screwdriver so in other words a screwdriver that lights up when you touch a live circuit. Okay so that's pretty much everything you're going to need and the first thing we're going to use is these three to do the power cable. So what we generally do is measure it up across the top of the window screen. This is going just to the left of the rear view mirror. We have a cable tie wrapped around here. And then what I generally do on, on both of them is wrap a bit of electrical tape around them. Now the reason for that is to pad them out because when you've cut them, they're normally quite sharp. And as you'll notice, you've got probably a, blush, a brush suede or brush leather headlining depending on model. And you don't want this rubbing on the inside of it and making a mess. So if we just pad it out with some tape, keeps it nice and smooth, very easy to do. So we're going to finish off, put this tape around this one, and then we're going to tuck this gently above the headlining. Now the headlining itself is basically made of like a fibre substance underneath the covering. So be careful. You can normally just get your fingers and just sort of flex it enough. They've got the light shining there, so it's a bit dark, I'm afraid. But basically, you can normally pull it down enough to just shove them up out of the way until we get to the airbag corner here. And then what we're going to do is feed the power cable behind it now, if you're struggling because there's a block or something on the end of your power cable that you're using, use the smaller end, use this end, and feed it up through and behind the airbag. The airbag's like a big bag, and you just tuck it behind it. You can get your whole finger behind it, it's not difficult, and then up and round. When we've got to here, we go, we pull this rubber seal off. So, just quickly open the door. Let's keep the door shut because of the noise. And you can normally, they are quite firm, especially when they've not been in bits. There we go, pull all that off, all the way up, there you go, there's your airbag look, put your finger right behind it, look, no problem at all, nice and easy, big gap, and then run your cable down the edge. So that's what I'm going to do now, tuck it behind the airbag and we're going to end up here. And there we go, nice and neatly behind. Now, if you get it stuck in this corner here, you can use your plastic leverage tool up to just shove it down. Okay, so if we can, if you come up and it's sort of stuck on the headlining lip, just use your leverage tool, it won't damage it, and you can pop it in. We're then coming down, like I was saying, to the dash. What we're gonna do now, guys, is remove this panel. Now, it's on little poppers, so you can just sort of work your way around it. Try not to lever against this piece, because it's quite weak and fragile. Normally when you get it a reasonable amount off you can just put your fingers in and, and pull it loose. And there we go. Just watch the little lugs on the top there that clip under the plastic and we've got like a bracket there look, that slides into a lug and another one at the bottom that slides into a lug so just pay, be careful with that piece. Now this exposes you to some bolts which are what we're going to need. Now you can use any of these bolts as an earthing point for your power cable. So on your power cable at the end, there you go, you've got three wires and it's the black one. We're basically gonna earth it to any of these bolts. So go ahead and take one of these out. You got some like TX30s and stuff to remove. We're gonna earth that right now to one of these. So there I'm removing the TX40 bolt on this particular one. They're normally quite tight, these are. There we go, take that one out all together and we can thread our earth over that. 
and that's what I've done just so it sits nicely. So we've got our earth cable there and then we've put a washer behind it just so the bolt snugly sits back in when we, when we screw it up tight. There's our earth cable nicely done and then we're going to feed the yellow and red power cables down here and through into the fuse box. Now if you get stuck with this bit, grab the end of your cable tie that you snipped off earlier from using the roof and sort of slide it up in there and it comes out there a lot. Nice and easy to do. You can sellotape the uh, power cable to the end of your cable tie and just pull it back through nice and easily. So on to what fuses we're going to use. As for what fuses to use, generally on these vehicles I use the power seat fuses. Now you've got on this UK model 220 amps here you can touch your probe on that are constantly live and that's for seat movement so we can wire our constant live to that on this particular car obviously depending what continent it's sold on and what spec the fuse box layout is a different so you will have to just test so in other words with the ignition off you're going to test your fuse make sure it's constant oops put that on properly constantly live don't use any circuit for abs or airbags or anything safety related always use auxiliary circuits now for the switched live we've got some 20s up here and these are for heated seats so with the ignition off they register zero voltage when we put the ignition on that will register 12 volts so ignition is now on 12 volts same for the second fuse down individual seats there we go 12 volts so we've got our switched lives here and our constant lives here now for a vehicle like this with a blade fuse I highly recommend you pick up a couple of these these are called fuse spurs you can get them eBay Amazon again same sort of thing and what they do is basically make one fuse socket into two fuse sockets so it doubles up so you'll have the and you'll normally have a crimp on the end ready to crimp them on. Very handy, and that's what I'm using for this install. If it's a lease vehicle especially, you can remove the whole thing without any alterations to the car's wiring, any soldering or anything. Very plug and play. So there we go. There's your fuse spur. And it's going to go... Please pay attention to which way round I'm actually putting these fuse spurs because fuses have what's called a hot side. Nothing to do with heat or to do with electricity. So there we go. There's both your fuses in, your permanent, sorry, your permanent and your accessory fuse both in. Now before we go reassembling any plastic dashboard trims such as this, now's a good time to plug your camera in and try it. So let's just pop the ignition on. And there we go, that's powered up lovely. Don't think you can actually see it because the sun's shining on it. No, we can't see anything, can we? Oh, we can, there we go. But anyway, it won't start recording until the memory card is actually in, of course. So now, there we go, now you can see it. We're free to turn off the ignition and reassemble the side of the dashboard. So now we angle the piece back in at an angle and then click it short. Don't forget to pad your little trim back all the way around your rubber seal here. And last of all, fuse box lid, pop that back on. Sort of clicks in, can be difficult to do with one hand, there we go. And that's it guys, that is how you fit a dash cam to one of these vehicles. Thanks a lot for watching, bye for now.